This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store, Forged Irish Delt, FreeBets.com. Delighted to be joined with a big man, Spencer Oliver. We're back out, mate. Another interview for another massive fight. Start of the Bad Blood series. Fabio Wardley takes on Fraser Clark. I am buzzing for this, and I'm sure you are too. Massive fight, mate. Let's hope we don't get interrupted on this one, eh? Yeah. It's another story, but um, yeah, it's a great fight. Great fight. Bad Blood, Fabio Wardley, um, Fraser Clark, Fraser Clark. Trying to become the fastest ever to win a British title in his ninth fight, fight fastest ever heavyweight to win a British title. You know, it's a, it's a big ask against Fabio Wardley, who's proven. You know, he's um, you know he's he's developed as a heavyweight, 17 fights, 17 wins, 16 KOs, been the underdog um, on a number of occasions and come through with flying colours. Nathan Gorman was a great victory last time out against David Adlai as well. You know, it was a brilliant victory as well. And you go. He's proven at this level. Fraser Clark's not proven at this level. You know, Dave Allen last time out, he looked a little bit, you know, one-paced, and we saw that against Marius Wack as well. So all the question marks are on Fraser Clark. Can he deliver? Can he up his game? Because he's going to have to against Fabio Wardley, who, like I say, is proven. And Fraser, we've not seen that yet. It's been a bit frustrating watching Fraser, actually, because you go... I know it's there, but you know, and you've seen that in the amateur pedigree and all that, and there's a lot made of this amateur pedigree. Amateur and professional boxing, two totally different things. So don't worry about that Fabio Wally come from that white collar background. Doesn't mean a thing. Wally's proven and developed as a professional, and Fraser hasn't yet. So it makes it interesting, and he will start the underdog actually. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, we said we weren't going to get in. We did say we said we were not going to get interrupted this one. Green. I'm to no, mate, not mine. No. 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 Anyway, we, we said no interruptions, but it's no happened, mate. But yeah, he's all right. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll let Andy go. Um, for this fight, um, the the history is uh, something that can't be ignored. The purse bid situation. Do it show sometimes where it's good to let fights marinate a little bit? Um, because this fight, it was could have happened in May, but yeah. May last year, but it's even bigger now due to all the situation that has happened. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, Fraser, you know, he's only had eight fights, so he needed another fight under his belt before going into a fight of this magnitude. So you can understand why the fight has been postponed and delayed, and he was withdrawn from the purse bids, but now we're getting the fight. So, you know, I mean, he's had one more fight since then, but, you know, it's important at this stage of his career because he's still developing as a pro. So um, I'm glad that he gets his opportunity. He knows what this is, by the way. He knows that... It's a must win for him because losing, then you, you get recognised as this is your level and he wants to achieve much more than that. So he knows what he's going into and he knows what victory means and he knows what a loss means as well. So, you know, he's, um, he said that's, that's, that's fueled him in many ways. You know, I, said, I was having this conversation with him saying, listen, don't worry about criticism and people talking about you being the underdog and whatnot. Feed off that because you're always going to be the underdog. When you're the challenger, you are the underdog. That's it. Facts. Forget your amateur pedigree and where he's come from. He's proven you're not. Um, and take it as that. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. But it's a great fight. I know you said amateur is no different to pro, but when you base it off paper, you look at Fraser Clark, you know, however many years he spent in GB, Fabio Wardley, white collar background. Um, I know Fabio had more pro fights than Fraser, but when you look at it on paper, surprise that, that, that Clark is the underdog, really. No, I'm not really, because Wardley's proven in the professional ranks like you know what I mean he's beat good fighters you know he beat Nathan Gorman he beat David Adelaide last time out so he's proven he's he, you know we've seen him get taken to that dark place and he's come through you know and that's what you know you can only go on that like that's what I say to you the amateur thing doesn't mean a, a thing do you know what I mean you got to move away from that because it is a different sport um, and like I say like Wardley's had 17 fights Fraser's had eight so he's been in the professional ring a lot more than Fraser Clark and he's operated at a higher level and so that that makes him start the favorite and he's the champion as well so yeah I wouldn't I, I wouldn't read too much into that like where we're at right now yeah Fraser Clark was obviously the bigger name because of the backgrounds of the two but Wardley will start the favorite did just want to get a word on Joshua Waxy versus Dan Aziz. Um, you were there Saturday night. A great, great fight and, and one definitely for the fans to watch. Absolutely loved it, mate. You know, it was one of those fights that we, you know, we tipped Fab, um, sorry, uh, Boatsy to win the fight. We thought that he would win win the fight, but you didn't write Dan Aziz off. You said, look, if, if Boatsy doesn't turn up, Aziz wins. It was one of those sort of fights, but... I think the difference was that that Boatsy had the levels and he went through the levels and he controlled the space and it, you know he picked it up when he had to and then brought it down and he was a competitive fight but he was always winning the rounds. 
Um, it was, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It was an old school throwback fight. Dan Aziz, credit where credit's due. He took the fight to him. He made a fight of it, but it just wasn't enough. Boatsy proved that he belongs at a level above. And, and let's hope, I want to see Boatsy versus Yard next. Yeah. You know, with the undisputed going on June the 1st out, out in Saudi, with Bivol and Betabiev, I want to see that fight because I think that that's a fight that the British fans have wanted for ages. I think it's a fight that Frank Warren wants. I think it's a fight that Ben Shalom wants. So let's hope that we get that fight next. What did you make of the ring out there? We did see two knockdowns in round 11, um, caused by punches, but a little bit questionable. Both Bwatsi and Aziz admitted after how slippery the ring was. Um, what did you sort of make of it? Yeah, mate, that, it happens sometimes. You know, it was hot in there, a lot of sweat, and the guys, you know, they, they, they were slipping a lot. You know, it was difficult to hold their feet, but that just happens. You know, that's boxing. It was, it was unfortunate for both the guys. It was like you say, it was controversy surrounding were they knockdowns, were they knock knockdowns. Shots landed, and that was a problem, and he went over, so the referee had no choice but to count. But whether he was hurt or not was the first knockdown especially. The second one in the 11th round I think was legit. I think he landed at the back of the head and he went down quite heavily and I think that he felt that shot. And I think that also like in that 12th round with about 30 seconds to go, I thought quite he was possibly could have finished it then. And he and for me he sort of showed that respect and went, yeah, I'm gonna back off here a little bit. I don't know man, like I might be totally wrong on that, but it was just one of those where you go, I'm glad both guys saw the final bell because I love Dan Aziz and I love, you know, his background and how he's done it and how he's done it on the road and like, do you know what I mean? Gone through that small hall system and whatnot and he's, you know, in earned the right. Um, but it was a great fight, man. It was a great show, to be fair. I think Adam Azim looks a little bit flat against Enoch Paulson. Um, Caroline Dubois looked good. Reyes, Miranda Reyes, she was decent, man. She was very, very tough. You know, there was uh, Ben Whitaker really... Did he steal the show? That's the thing that everyone's talking about. I think that what we recognised was love or hate him, Marmite, right? He's one of those characters. Love or hate him, you've got to respect that this guy is a quality operator. And I think that he's going to go on and do massive things. I think he will go on and become a world champion. Um, because I just think that he's got that star quality about him. You know, you look at him and you go like, like a young Nazim Hamid back in the day. Like people, you know, they, 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 they didn't appreciate it. They said it was disrespectful or whatever. But then after you saw how good he was, you actually, like, you, you, you just got to accept it. And I think with Whitaker, he's one of those guys, lovely guy outside the ring, but you just got to appreciate just how good this guy is because he is good. And I think that, you know, he, he will show that over, you know, over the next few fights. And I think that we live in a world of entertainment and he's an entertainer. And I think that's really important. Ben Whitaker is the star of British boxing. He's the future of British boxing. Well, another thing we do have to talk about, um, a main, main talking point from the weekend, and I suppose going back to yourself and Johnny on the, on the Talk Boxing podcast, done big numbers, yeah. and it comes timely with the postponement of Fury Usyk. Um, surprise and shocked that we saw this um, postponement from a cut and, and disappointing as well. No, I was, I, was, I was disappointed, disappointed that we haven't got the undisputed fight. I mean, let's put this to bed now. Tyson Fury is not a coward. Do you know, forget all that. You know what I mean? Like the guy's proven he's not a coward. The cut was legit and it was unfortunate and it happens. He spars with an open head guard and he got caught with a shot, whether it was a shot or an uppercut or an elbow. It's hard to see on the video footage, but anyway, the eye opened and it's got postponed. It's just one of those unfortunate things. I mean, I think May the 18th might be a bit soon, if I'm totally honest. I mean, because he's got to go through the procedure of letting it heal, then going through the sparring again before obviously he fights. And it's always going to be a vulnerable area. So, you know, let's hope we get it because we haven't had an undisputed since 1999. And if this is the first undisputed in the four belt era, actually. You know, you're talking Lennox Lewis of uh, Van der Holyfield going way back when. So that's how often they come around. Let's hope we get that because we get that undisputed champion and we get the best fight and the best. And, you know, hopefully we get Joshua versus Fury and everything else. But we need to get Fury versus Alexander Usyk first. And, and it does cast doubt over it, May the 18th, because of the, uh, because of the cut and the time process on that cut being able to heal and him doing it, you know, it's, it's going to give... Alexander Usyk a huge advantage going in because he's got something to aim for. He'll know what it is and, and he'll feel that that's where Tyson Fury will be vulnerable. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how the, how the cut heals. But yeah, Fury's, um, it, it was all them conspiracy theories about was that old footage and all that. Of course it, of course it wasn't. Of course it wasn't. That's always going to go because 
Fury's like the boy that called wolf, cried wolf because yeah. he's the one that always calls yeah. everyone else out. So he's always he's got to expect that stick and that backlash, and that's the way that it is. Yeah. You said that Tyson Fury isn't a coward, and it brings me up to comments that were got made by Aegis Klimas, um, Usyk's manager, yeah. where I think he said something like. Fury got hit with a pan and, and stuff like that. So, so I suppose you're just backing up comments from stuff that Egus might have said. Listen, look, I'm sure someone in the Fury camp would have said the same to them had it had it been on the other foot. That's the world we live in. Do you know what I mean? That is what it is. It's like say, like you know, with some mad things that are said from all camps these days. Egus said that, and I just I don't think he was being disrespectful to Fury's misses. It was just saying that come out of his mouth, and that's it is what it is. I think he apologised to Tyson about it. He said, listen. Respect me when I say I didn't call your wife or anything or whatever. So, yeah, it is what it is, man. It's, it, it's, like I say, we live in a world of entertainment, man. That, that's what it is. A world of social media. Things have changed. So, yeah, just enjoy the ride. Spencer, top man, as always. Always good to catch up with you, mate. And, yeah, all the best for this press, mate. Top man, thanks. We need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live.